Kim Bankston is the General Manager of Human Resources at GE Hitachi Nuclear in Wilmington. She is the co-chair of the Wilmington Chamber's Diversity Committee, and she has been invaluable this year in helping Wilma Magazine launch its Women to Watch Leadership Initiative to help develop more women leaders in our community. Kim will speak today about how our region can win the war for talent. Please join me in welcoming Kim to the stage. Good morning, everyone. So it's interesting how I, I got here on stage. I was here probably a, a year and a half ago, invited by Green Resources to sit at their table and come to this power breakfast. And I was so energized and inspired by what I heard. I, um, Julie was on stage from the uh, airport, and we had people from different technology sectors all talking about great things that were going on here in Wilmington. So I'm honored to be, be back today, but I have to tell a funny story. Rob called me, um, I think he was driving maybe on his cell phone, and he said, hey, Kim, are you free December 2nd to, to, to come to the power breakfast? And I was like, yeah, I get to go again. This is exciting. I want to hear some new stuff. And then he said, um, I, I, I could want you to, to talk a little bit um, and, and talk on a particular topic. And I said, OK, so it's about 500 people, and I said, huh? Okay. <laughs> and then he said, I want you to talk maybe on staffing and recruiting. And I'm like, oh, God, you're killing me. Really? Really? 7.30 in the morning, staffing and recruiting? <laughs> so, you know, Thanksgiving, I was at home in Atlanta. I'm a native Atlantan, so I was visiting my parents. And I'm sitting there on the couch with my mom and dad, and I'm telling my mom, hey, mom, i got to talk to 500 people about recruiting. She said, baby, just don't bore them. <laughs> so, so I promise you my commitment to you today is I'm not going to talk to you about all the things you can do online, e-recruiting, or how to make your postings better. There's seminars, there's books, there's tons of things for that. What I'm going to do is, is kind of what my peers have been doing this morning already, is build upon this wonderful collective that we have of Wilmington. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud to call Wilmington my home. I'm a, a second-time Wilmingtonian. Um, is that a technical term, Wilmingtonian? Um, I, I was here um, about 12 years ago. I was living in Atlanta working for GE, and I got the chance to come here for an assignment to be the HR leader for our manufacturing, fuel manufacturing operation that's based here in Wilmington as well as in Japan. And I jumped at the chance because I, I went to school in South Carolina. I know about the beaches and all. And so when I was like, Wilmington? You're kidding? Yes, I love it. I want to go to the beach. But well, you know, at the age at the time, I really wanted to be at the beach. Again, this was 12 years ago. Um, but one of the things that I noticed is Wilmington was on that cusp at the time, right? Mayfair, I think, was in kind of stage one phase. Um, they had not built the extension, but they were starting some of the road construction that now is the, the exit point into to GE. And something that happened to us as a, as a company, um, it was very interesting. Stephanie said early that you know we're kind of a big business and, and making moves are kind of tough. We made a really quick move for our nuclear division. We decided while I was still here in Wilmington to move our headquarters from San Jose, California. San Jose is known as a big technology rich area not too far from Silicon Valley. To move our global headquarters for our nuclear business from San Jose to Wilmington. And that's part of the reason I'm now back here uh, 12 years later, because with the headquarters being here, I was able to come back and be the HR leader for the nuclear business. And what I noticed when I came back is a couple of things. First of all, Mayfair is now complete, great shopping, awesome. But the, the other thing is how the city has changed. There's a different vibe downtown. Um, housing is different, right? Um, the housing complex that I live in, and I think there's a few other folks out here in Taron Woods, uh, that subdivision was not even on the map. It was the Congleton Forest at the time, and now it's a booming housing division. And there's plenty other of those types of divisions ramping up around in the area. Um, when we look at industries, we have a lot more small and mid-sized industries. While there's always been GEs and Corning's and PPDs here in the area, these smaller farms are starting to come into the area, and it's providing us a richness. So that's something we really have to start thinking about when we think about the war for talent. And here's why. With the technology revolution, we've got five generations in the workplace. You know, often we'll hear a lot about the millennials and the Zers, and I don't know what they're going to use later for all the other generations, because we've run out of the alphabet. 
I don't know what, you know, Gen 1, 2, three, I don't know. But really when we, uh, when we look at the generations in the workplace, we've got five for a lot of different reasons. First of all, expansion of lifespan, expansion of people wanting to work longer and keep their intellectual juices going. Um, we've got all these generations in the workplace, so how do we leverage our city as a competitive advantage? Think about it this way. Matures and boomers, that's the, the first part of the first two of the five generations, they may be on their second careers. But when they work for a company, they may want to relocate to a place that they can now call their retirement home, because they're not going to move again. Right? And you're going to want to recruit them because from a technical depth perspective, they can bring things to your business and take off running like that. Then we've got the middle group, my fun group, the, the, the Gen Xers. They got a lot of stuff going on, right? A lot of stuff. You know, they're, they're taking care of aging parents that might want to come with them to the area. They're supporting the millennials because they just don't leave home, right? <laughs> And then they've got their own lives to lead. How about that? Do something for yourself, right? What about me? Remember, the Gen Xers, it's about us, right? Somewhere, hello. Um, and so there's do, traveling spouses that are trailing spouses that are looking for work. And so how do we involve that from a recruiting aspect? And then, of course, you do have the millennials and the Zers and whatever else we call them. And you know, we, we give them a little bit too much hype. They're just young folks trying to make a start. All of us had to do that at some point in time. The difference is they don't take no for an answer, right? So how do you, how do you build that into your recruiting strategy? The other thing about millennials, but quite frankly, all of us now, our work and our personal lives blend. It's no longer punch a clock, go home. There's things that we want to do during the day because we might have a conference call at night. So how do we have that ease of blending our work and our personal life? So what I want to do today, because we only have 10 minutes, and all of us were scared about this 10 minutes, right? So I just want to leave you with a few nuggets of how we as a collective community here in Wilmington, and you, you heard Rob say that I spent a lot of time also working in the community. GE affords me that, that ability and my role to do that. Is, but how as a collective can we do some things around recruiting that doesn't really cost a lot and builds upon this, this great area that we call Wilmington? Now, it's interesting, Stephanie said something about, you know, this, this richness of this area that we're in and our brand, right? That's important. Are you tying Wilmington to your company brand? Now, up here you'll see, because this is not a commercial about GE, I actually put PPD up here on Glassdoor.com. Glassdoor, and there's several other types of areas like this, but, but we're starting to look at Glassdoor more closely as a branding tool. It's about the company. You put your profile out there, but quite frankly, most of the comments and all, you don't control, which is kind of scary, right? That you put up something on a website, and now you don't control anything about the messaging. But what's really cool about it is people will talk about the location they work in, the lifestyle that they're afforded in that location, the pay in the area, the housing in the area. So how do we leverage the fact that Wilmington has all these great opportunities and if you're a business here, are you tying Wilmington to your brand? Do you talk about Wilmington on your website? Do you talk about all the thing, great things you can get involved in here in Wilmington? Do you talk about what it's like to live here in Wilmington? When you bring a candidate in, and this is another thing about e-crewing that's a little bit tough. A lot of times we're interviewing people over video. Sometimes we don't even fly people in to interview, right? Because it's easier, it's cheaper, we're trying to save money. But if you're trying to attract someone, do you tell them all the great things that the city has to offer? Maybe for their spouse, for their parents that might be following them, right? Or for their children who may want to go to college here, right? The other piece about brand is that it's not just the brand for your company. It's the brand for other companies in the area because you're not going to be able to hire everyone. We are a nuclear business. I can't hire nurses, right? It's the simplest fact, right? But if I've got connections and I'm branding and working with the hospital, if someone says, hey, I have a spouse that's in healthcare that's a nurse or a doctor, we can make those connections. So that kind of goes into the second part, community engagement. Now, for a small business, you may not always be able to sponsor things or to, to pay to be out there in the community, but you can still be out there by volunteering 
whether it's joining the chamber, whether it's participating in different events. You'll see on, on the back screen here work on Wilmington. First of all, that gives your employees, it ties them to your ethics of being in the community. One of the things that we know now is when people join a company, they don't just join it because of pay or benefits or even some of the working conditions. They join it because they want something greater. And that actually cuts across multiple generations. It's not just the millennials or the Xers. Even boomers want that loyalty. So being engaged in the community and having a voice is important. The other piece to this, and, and what's really, really critical, is that when you're in the community, you're building your network. Just think about this morning at this power breakfast. How many people did you meet that later when you're recruiting, not necessarily recruiting them, but leveraging across to say, I need your help with this. Or, hey, I'm, I don't have a candidate here that I can't use, but maybe you can use them, right? So that community engagement is important. Also, the richness and the diversity of what and who we're bringing to the area and making sure that people don't leave the area. Sometimes people will make career choices and career, need to make career changes. If we work together as a community, we allow them to have that choice and that option without leaving the area. It benefits for us as employers and it benefits the city from an economics perspective. The most critical thing that we have to do is develop our pipeline. We have rich universities here in the area, whether it's our Cape Fear Community College, which has great technical programs that feed into our pipelines of a lot of our jobs, or it's the university. You know, UNCW, whether it's the, the science majors, the liberal art majors, or even some of the specialty centers, and, and you'll hear a little bit more around that later, um, that's rich for our community. But it can't just be at the college university level. We've got to start earlier in our school systems, and that's got to be us as employers getting involved. This picture here is one of the science Olympiads from uh, the Rockamy um, Academy. Get involved. If you're a small business, all you can have to do is just volunteer and help coach or mentor some of these students. We've got to start the pipeline earlier. There's a scary fact I saw online uh, the other day. Um, that said by 2020, we're going to have one million technology jobs here in the U.S. that we won't have graduates to fill. Because when you think about it, 2020 isn't five years away now. It's four years away. One million jobs. So we have to start growing our pipeline earlier from a recruitment perspective. And we've got great STEM programs, whether it's through Cape Fear Futures or through the school system, to help us build that pipeline. This region is really rich to attract talent. Um, I was looking on, on in a, an article recently, citylab.com, and in the article they talk about how do entrepreneurs pick cities to come to and why do they pick some of the bigger cities for tech startups. And it's not because of pay incentives, et cetera. It's about the ability to attract and retain talent. But then when I started looking at you know, why they choose Boston or Seattle or Silicon Valley, they started talking about things like you know, the intellectual capital in the area or the, the quality of living, the ability to, to work and live in the same place and, and not have too much disruption during the day. Well, guess what? We've got that in Wilmington and more. Some of these facts are coming out of the uh, economic study that the chamber recently did and actually released a few weeks ago in this room. But a couple things I want to bring your attention to as we're thinking about recruiting is some points you can take back and use to sell as you're recruiting for your company. We have the highest number of knowledge workers in, in, in North Carolina when you do it on a percentage basis. That is awesome. That's a talent pool we've got to be tapping into. Don't let that knowledge group leave this area, right? The second highest number of patents issued only to Raleigh. That's all of you in this room and the folks that, that work for you. Right? Pretty exciting stuff. I think we can beat Silicon Valley out. We, be, you know, we moved from San Jose here. We still have a, a large group in San Jose, but we chose to, to, to bring our engineers here. Uh, second highest number of science graduates. Again, that pipeline is here. We just got to keep nursing it. Um, the other thing that we have is a great quality of life and living. Talent wants to be able today to leave the office, go to a great place for lunch, go running, do whatever, come back to the office. Because again, remember, work and life is starting to blend more together. There's not these set hours. As much as we sometimes will complain about traffic when they close River Road, 
<laughs> My team that's over here hears me talk about that now. They close River Road. I can't get where I need to go. But you know what? I'm a native Atlantan, and, and I have sat in traffic for an hour and a half at times when there's been an accident on the connector, and I couldn't figure out which side street to get off on to get around it. Even on our worst days here, our traffic is not that bad, right? You can always get to unique places. There's a lot of culture that's being brought here in the area, whether it's the theater, whether it's um, the things that are being brought in by the university. I, every time I go past the logo and see all the stuff that's going on on the campus of the university, we need to be using that as we're recruiting and talking to people about the area and bringing talent in and using this as a selling point. You know, we have a lot of technology groups here in the area, such as Tech Mountain. Um, we've got a lot of firms here, whether it's GE, PPD, Corning, that have been here for years. GE celebrating over 45 years here in the area. We can do this. We just have to continue to work together to grow the area. And so I just want to leave you with three quick takeaways again. Make sure your company brand, whether you are a small startup company or even those of us, the, the larger companies, have to remember to tie our brand to Wilmington. It's a great advantage of the region. We've got a lot of wonderful resources. We need to use this to recruit talent, but more importantly, to retain talent. You know, the, the, the cost of talent turnover is high. We're going to spend a lot of money on bringing talent in. Make sure that ta our talent's happy here by letting them know all of the great things that we have here in the area. Um, our total engagement in the community is critical. You know, it's, it's no different than having a voice, speaking up, helping out. Um, if all of us do a little bit, um, we'll make this a great, great area to, to live and work. And then leverage the business network that you have. When you come to events like this, please make sure you're walking away with folks that you can reach out to and call and lean on as you're, we're all in this war for talent together, right? Um, I've often had people send me resumes and say, for whatever reason, they could not hire this person. Maybe they didn't have that type of job or skill set. They throw the resumes over to us. We may not have an opening at that time that fits, but now that person is in a pipeline and being watched, and so that we, when we do have those opportunities, we can reach out and give them a call. That doesn't cost a lot to send an email. Well, I thank you this morning, hopefully. I can tell my mom I did not bore you. <laughs> and I look forward to continuing to work with you to help us grow our talent here in Wilmington. Thank you.